of year when we're talking about lake effect snow. But what is that? Well, for people who live around the Great Lakes, you're familiar with the idea. For anyone outside of that, you probably haven't been impacted by it. So we'll detail what it is. You need a really big body of water. The relative warm temperature of the water uh, in comparison to the colder temperature of the land is one of the biggest factors that plays into lake effect snow. Now, the water doesn't have to be warm. It just has to be relatively warm. Temperature of the water could be sitting right around zero degrees Celsius. Compare that to the temperature on the land, possibly closer to about minus 10 degrees Celsius. We then get Arctic air moving over the water, and that air has to be very cold. There has to be at least a 13 degree temperature difference between the water and the air moving over. You also have to have what's called a large fetch. Fetch is distance, and it has to be over 100 kilometers. Now, that's why lake effect snow comes into play with our Great Lakes. They're large bodies of water. Lake effect snow doesn't happen over a small body. You have to have that wind traveling over 100 kilometers. As it does, as the air travels over the relatively warmer water, we get condensation. Clouds begin to form. This then spreads snow out on the lee side of the lake. And that's why you can get these very narrow bands of intense snow, whiteout conditions on the eastern side of the lake or the lee side of the lake, whereas just a bit south, you might see no snow at all. It's a very localized event. The greatest time to see lake effect snow is between November and February, right as we head into next month.